that stands out to me when I've seen the world evolve into what it is now in 2019 is how we look at the LGBT community and how it's woven itself into the mainstream limelight. A couple examples I can think of uh, for things that have happened just this year regarding people who have come out as gay or bi or regarding anyone who is gay or bi is Little Nas X coming out as bisexual not too long ago, changing the way we hear Old Town Road for a while, and in the sports world, easily one of the greatest LGBT athletes ever, Megan Rapino, had just led the United States Women's National Team, their second straight FIFA Women's World Cup final over the Netherlands, also not too long ago, as well as also getting some support and praise from sites like Twitch, and depending on who you ask, YouTube, when it comes to support for the LGBT community and celebrities like Lady Gaga have said that they, you know, she would take a bullet for the community. The point is, is that the community has done a really good job of gaining loads and loads of mainstream acceptance, which leads me to my main point, the LGBT presence in anime. Since anime became popular over here in the West, there have been numerous examples of LGBT characters and relationships with examples like Shion and Yaoi from Psycho Pass, Toya and Yukito from Cardcaptor Sakura, which my only reaction to that is... Ugh. The famous and infamous, depending on who you ask, the Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune relationship in Sailor Moon, and the You Are Worthy of My Grace relationship between Shinji and Kaoru from Evangelion. Uh, but while there are shows that feature LGBT characters, what if there was a show whose main concept was about how to live as a teenager with issues regarding your identity. Not just have a character that lives this way, but have characters that live this way and a show how it's like. Well, in the winter 2011 anime season, we got the anime series that gave viewers a realistic look about how two people cope with transitioning to make themselves feel better as a person while also developing a relationship together. Here is the one and the only Wandering Sun. Wandering Sun is a drama and size of life anime series that is directed by A. Aoki, written by Mari Okada, and was made by a studio known as AIC Classic. It came out in winter of 2011, and there are places that have 11 episodes, there are places that have 12, but right now I'm just going to write that they have 12 episodes. I really don't want to say that much about the story because it would take away from just the majority of what this show has, so I'm just going to just limit it to, you know, a certain... I'm out of the synopsis, so this is all I'm going to say about it. The story follows a boy named Shiuchi who transfers to a new school and befriends a girl named Yoshino. And they both reveal their big secrets to each other. The feminine looking Shiuchi wants to be a girl, as he's normally a guy, and the tomboyish looking Yoshino wants to be a guy, as normally a girl. The story goes on from the 5th grade to the end of junior high, and during that time they both meet multiple friends as both Shiuchi and Yoshino overcome their fears of societal norms on gender issues by wearing clothes from the opposite genders in class and expressing their feelings for each other, putting them basically on the list I just mentioned earlier when it comes to LGBT relationships. There wasn't a lot when it came to the production of the anime, but there was a considerable amount when it came to the making of the manga from the creator Takako Shimura, from getting most of the characters' names from just looking them up in name dictionaries to consulting the various girls' fashion magazines just to get the girls' clothing right in the show, to when she said that Wandering Sun was originally going to be just a girl wanting to be a guy, but then Shimura added a boy who wanted to be a girl because she knew that they would hold more worry and emotion and would show more development as they grow up. The manga did very well when it came out and currently has over 1 million copies in print in Japan. It was praised for its use of pacing, how the characters are portrayed, the simplistic art style, and the role of gender reversal in the story instead of it being used as a plot device, as well as its universal message of acceptance regardless if you're going through a gender identity crisis or not. So, does the anime go up to par with the manga? Yeah! And AIC Classic, the studio adapting this, got the perfect writer to help make it all come to life. I've mentioned her before, it's been a while since I've talked about her, and her name is Mari Okada. I've talked about her numerous times on this channel, uh, or I've seen numerous shows from that she's written. I've only talked about her, I think, twice. Uh, I've talked about Nagi no Asukara 
and Toradora. I'm pretty sure there's more, but if not, there is going to be more in the future. I've seen numerous shows that she's written on, as well as her direct directorial debut, Maquia, uh, When the Promised Flower Blooms, and this is the third time, if I remember correctly, that I reviewed a show that she worked on. And I gave both of them a positive review, and yeah, you bet that I'm going to put Wandering Sun in that same area. One reoccurring pattern that I've seen from Okada, especially when I look back at the two shows that I've reviewed, you know, back at my other house, uh, is that Okada makes her characters more mature than their age suggests they are. She did a really good job implementing that aspect of the characters in those other two shows, but to me, putting that into the main characters in Wandering Sun was damn near important to the story. Unlike Nagi no Asukara or Toradora, Wandering Sun touches on a very sensitive topic regarding one's feelings towards themselves or others, and that is the topic of self-discovery. The theme of maturity is used to start the drama immediately when the show begins, putting everything in the place for what's about to unfold for the rest of the series, making episode one of the series one of the best first episodes I have ever seen. Hell, even when the first episode establishes the main gist of the show, when you look back at it after watching the whole series, that episode didn't tell you jack shit! There are situations that arise as you watch this series and instead of being bored, predictable, and repetitive, the result is actually the exact opposite as each development captured my attention and felt like it belonged in the story. I'm not going to spoil this in any way possible, but all I'm going to say is that Wandering Sun, again, they have one of the best first episodes I've ever seen. It also has one of the best endings I have ever seen. Uh, and it just concludes this already m memorable series with an extremely satisfying ending. Almost like a sandwich. A greatness sandwich. Both Shiuchi and Yoshino are easily one of the most well-written LGBT characters in the history of anime. That is not an ex that exaggeration, and I'm not putting that shit lightly. And again, while there are other LGBT couples and relationships in anime, this is the only one that I can find that actually focuses on them rather than just having them there just to be more diverse and appeal to a wider range of audience members. Shiuchi and Yoshino honestly feel like real characters going through the same situations that we all grew up facing added on to their dilemma of finding out who they really are. The characters overall were all realistic in their own way and it didn't matter if they were going through something or not, no character was left out in terms of screen time and contribution to the story at hand. Just like in the manga, there was also some minimalistic animation and in a way, it's like the animation in my last review, My Neighbor is the Yamadas, only Wandering Sun is taken more seriously. The character design has a sense of being normal, but also different at the same time, and the color palette also helped me interpret the very important developments in the story, while also helping me take it, in a way, as a lighter anime. It doesn't throw uh, all this crazy stuff at you because it was an important show. It was very simple in its story, which made it simple for me to understand. The music for Wandering Sun is pretty good. The opening is kind of this acoustic ballad, with your, you know, stereotypical lyrics about love and being your true self. We hear it everywhere, but it's still good. While the ending, on the other hand, was a pop song that kinda didn't fit for me, as on the show, I didn't really, like, remember it that much. And then going back towards it, uh, listening to them as standalone tracks, the opening is really good. Uh, the, the, the ending is not really but it was still oh, pretty good regardless. And the soundtrack has 38 tracks, and you know, all of them, they last around about two minutes long, and the majority of them are piano pieces. You have a couple of acoustic pieces, violin pieces, as well as some short and sweet, upbeat tracks uh, out of the 35 uh, that I could find. And each track holds its own weight, whether if it's a standalone track or it's a part of the show. Uh, there are a lot of hard-hitting ones, even going back listening to the soundtrack now. When I finished watching Wandering Sun, uh, it gave me memories about a kid that I knew when I was a junior in high school. We went to the same journalism class, and it wasn't until about a month into the year where she said that not only she was bisexual, but she was also going to get a gender reversal and turn into a guy. Over the course of the year, he started wearing guys' clothes, changed his name, and was a part of the Gay Straight Alliance that 
at, uh, at my high school, as well as being a part of a numerous other things at the high school. I remember this, seeing this guy everywhere after that. Um, the point with the story that popped up was that watching Wandering Sun reminded me how common it was today, or how common it is. The point with the story that popped up was that watching Wandering Sun reminded me how common it is in today's world to have people, especially in their late teens and early 20s, go through something like this. Uh, to question their gender and to have a, uh, to go through a process where they, you know, they are a girl but they want to turn into a guy or a guy that they turn into a girl. So, as someone who's never really experienced any life-changing form of self-discovery, the closest thing I could find understanding what's going on is through different forms of media. There are many different forms of media that, uh, that expresses be like to be bi or trans to someone who is not bi or trans. And I can say this with absolute confidence, that Wandering Sun is the best example of someone who... Uh, so again, someone who's never really experienced it, watching something that shows someone who's going through, this is the best example of it that I can find. It's so important, yet I don't think I've seen another anime as powerful as a message as practice what you preach and be comfortable with who you want to be this underrated. I have barely heard anybody talk about this. I don't know if it's because of the influx of seasonal shows going on right now because there's a bunch of shows that are starting up, but my god, I've barely heard anybody talk about this show apart from a, you know, a number of other analytical videos uh, because there's just a lot to this show. Well, I mean, at least that was my mindset when making the script for this, uh, you know, just to, you know, put this on the public eye by putting my two cents in the show. Uh, but no, overall, this show is really good. It's amazing. I, I highly recommend it if you get the chance to. It is on Crunchyroll so you can sh see the show for yourself. Well, for me, Wandering Sun does a great job of taking you out of your comfort zone and into reality uh, when it comes to the conversation about LGBT. And with that, I'm going to give Wandering Sun a perfect 10 out of 10. All right, so before I end this video, I was actually notified of this last night. Uh, I just found out that uh, there is now a trans suicide hotline that just got up and running not too long ago. I just found out about it last night, uh, thanks to a good friend from high school. Uh, I'm going to put the number right here, as well as to put the number uh, down in the description. Uh, if any of you who are watching this who are going through uh, issues uh, uh, regarding people who are not okay with the fact that you're switching genders, or, uh, or, if, or if anyone is really getting into your head and it makes you think that you're not worth it anymore call this number and so with that thank you guys for watching this wandering sun review video if you like this video hit the like button down below uh, if you want to see any more videos that i have made uh, in the past uh you can look down uh on my, on the screen there are a couple of videos there as well as more in my description and the channel and if you want to see any videos that i make in the near future you can hit the subscribe button on the screen, also down below. And with that, my name is Payne, and I'll see you when I review <laughs> Spirited Away.